good to see you have arrived, soldier. I have summoned you here today, not because you are the best shot of your squad, but because you do not ask any unnecessary questions. Your objective is to go to a nearby town that is being overrun by zombies. These runheads are costing us a lot of money. We're going to take care of them. But believe me, you don't want to be any witness. I don't want to see any of this on the news. You are the drive-by hero this country needs. Make America great again. All right, well, with that lovely exposition out of the way, uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, your gallivanting and murderous uh, Chupacabra friend, out on a military excursion to blast our way through some zombies, and we're back again today to have one of those delicious indie first look type videos of another game that's actually out on early access called Drive-By Hero. It's out for $2 or about $1.99, and I mistakenly picked it up on early access during the summer sale because I thought it was going to be like a cutesy zombie shooter where you could tactfully go through like a, a really cheap story and just have some fun for a video series that could be a bit of a lark. But it actually is appearing to be more of an on-rails shooter, where you're just hove through waves of zombies, hoping that they don't impact your World War II Jeep, which is kind of what this looks like, and dent it with their foreheads. Because apparently, we literally bought the cheapest World War II replica Jeep that was available, and this one, uh, it's made out of paper mache and it's prone to denting so that we can only impact four zombies or so before we run out of paper mache and we get eaten. At least I think that's kind of what's going on here. The story says that we are a private contractor for some type of illicit, maybe government organization, and we have to go kill the zombies because they're preventing our group from making any money. Which, as I'm sure you know, in a capitalist society, that's... We can't just have anybody just, like, preventing anybody from making the dollary dues. That just won't stand. I mean, we had that entire thing in the Middle East to make Halliburton all that money. So, we've got to go out and murder all these rot heads and try to save the day. And th this is basically the entire game. You just point an M4... I think this is an M4. I mean, this is... M16? Yeah, M16. I'm confusing World War II things because of the Jeep. At the zombies, you mow them down, literally mow them down like you're a lawnmower, and you try to reach the end of the game. And the only depth of gameplay that you're really given is that there's just more and more zombies to feed to your limited supply of bullets. And I'm actually doing a lot better than I did during my testing phase, because they were literally throwing more zombies at me than I could physically handle. Oh, okay, so this one is like a boss zombie, and it's throwing rocks at me. How lovely. Don't throw rocks at me, Gerald. That's just being rude. Rude, McCrude, McDude. So, this is a cheap game. Like I said, it's $1.99, it's like $2, and I gotta say, it really kind of feels like a $2 title. I know that it's not unusual to have games in early access that are very, very raw, but this, oh, and it just, it completely crashed and turned off after I shot the boss zombie. So essentially my thoughts on this game is, I think this one might actually be one of those asset flipping type games that a lot of YouTubers constantly complain about. And what an asset flip game is, for those of you who might not be overly familiar, it's not unusual for people who develop games in Unity, and this game is in fact developed inside of Unity, to go out and grab a bunch of hodgepodge different assets that really don't look like they were either made by the same person, or even have the same overall level of quality to them, and then they stick them all together in a game, 
very loosely strung together in something that could be construed as a game, and then they go start to sell it on Early Access or some other platform because there's a much lower threshold for quality control and they can kind of sneak in and make a quick buck. And I'm led to think that because a lot of different elements in this game don't have the same level of quality. Like this truck or this Jeep has a lot more detail put into it, both texture wise and like modeling wise than the trees, than a lot of these buildings. Like all these buildings use the same one or two different brickwork textures. And obviously they didn't even really bother from the people behind Idea Games, the people that made this, to even really give us what some semblance of a believable sidewalk. Unless this is in some sort of alternate dimension where like it's always November and it's always like kind of snow, but it's also spring. But this package, it's it's very raw. Like, I believe this was a, a full-fledged game in the making a little bit more if there was like a pre-alpha sticker in the upper corner, if there were some more like weapons or like a semblance of weapons that like you click on it and it says coming soon and switch you back to your main weapon in order for you to use. But right now, all this is is a scripted track that our Jeep runs on. We literally mow down zombies that aren't even preloaded into the game. Like I could believe this game is a little bit easier if I could just constantly see all the zombies I was gonna shoot in the distance and I could just kind of snipe at them as I approached. Like that would be a lot easier. But as it stands right now, I am literally just mowing these bad boys down and it doesn't really seem like the animation for the machine gun is matching up with like me hitting the zombies. Like I think so long as the machine gun animation is playing outside of this gun and I go like over a zombie, it will fall over so long as you know, the little flash is coming out of the barrel. Also, you start out different levels in the exact same city area, just repeated over and over again, where you literally start on the sharp edge of a map. So I don't know, it's not really expensive. So I'm tempted to give the developers the benefit of the doubt and say, it's entirely possible that this game is still in a ridiculously early stage of development where maybe it should have waited a little while before putting itself out onto Steam. Because, you know, things are looking very hodgepodgey here. There's not even a lot of variety in the zombies, which all look like they have the exact same animations to them. So I don't know. What I can say is the idea of a cheap on rail shooter isn't a bad one by any means. Uh, I've played a number of on rail shooters when I was younger. I, I found them quite fun. They were a decent way to relax at the end of a long day of school and just not think about life for a while. That said, you know, Usually on rail shooters have a lot more events going on. They they go around a lot more terrain like decent or really interesting terrain is usually a hallmark of everything that's going on inside of the the on rail shooter because I can't control where I'm going to go and explore an area and find the cool bits. But what I can do if I'm in a rail shooter is you can take me on a tour of your lovely little world and show me all the nifty stuff that ha you have to offer. Otherwise, you know, this is kind of a lukewarm experience. This is very dull. I'd almost say this is worse than a great number of free games that I've played on platforms like itch.io or Game Jolt, which while they weren't like the most depth packed games, they had the core game play down and then they added enough variety to keep me interested as I went through the game. So you really got to think about as a developer, if you're in a very raw stage like this, what do I need to do to make this package very serviceable to people just to make it very fun, even if it's extremely short and there's not a ton to do. In the case of a lot of two and a half D shooters, which you can find by the truckload online, is they usually go the route of having a lot of enemies that 
behave very similarly to one another, but each one of them looks differently. They spend a lot of time on the art assets, and they don't worry so much about adding a crazy amount of story, but a little story is not typically that hard to write, especially if you're using, like, your friends for voice actors. So, you got options there. But you add some different weapons that all function off of the basic programming or code sets, and then you just make them look a little bit different artistically, and that's all you really need. That's the money right there. Now, the other thing I really need is... I need a grenade. I need a shotgun. I need something to unlock as I go through... Because here's an example of, like, an emergent narrative thing going on. The narrator that you had at the start of this game could acknowledge the fact that the zombies are getting more and more plentiful, they're starting to get stronger, so you need to pull out the big guns. So they tell you that a part of your mercenary package is sitting underneath the seat of the vehicle, so if you open up the trunk, you will find a shotgun or a missile launcher or a grenade launcher that you can then go ahead and start using on the zombies to make these hordes a little bit more manageable. Now, you've only got a certain number of shots, so make them count. And in parentheses, what's actually happening is you're just limiting the amount of ammo to be infinite, but only for this small leg of the game. So you can make this really crazy arcadey fun in order to give people just that really satisfying, gory, explosive, blood, guts, and zombie moans feeling as they go through this corridor. Like, this could be really fun. And then right as you reach the boss, you introduce another mechanic. Like, now you have limited control over your vehicle, so you can duck behind cover and make sure that you don't immediately get obliterated by what's coming at you. You know, I'd like to think that even developers that are intending to be a fly-by-night developer and not actually make a full-fledged game, I feel like even you could just take a couple of ideas refine a group of assets that you got and make a pretty decent game. Because the whole idea behind these assets is that it's supposed to make your life easier in some respect. It's not there because they think someone's gonna cheat. It's not there for you to learn. It's being sold so that you can use it. That's the whole idea. So why not do the best that you can with it and set a standard for people who can see what you're doing. Now, the other thing that I'm very suspicious curious about, and something that I've actually had to look up, is apparently something that some questionable games do to get through, you know, green light and to get onto Steam, to get people to buy them, is to offer people one of two things. They either offer a bunch of Steam cards that people can collect and get levels with, and that the developers themselves can somehow get a fair amount of money with by giving themselves cards or keys or something in order to rank, rake in a bunch of cards that they can then sell on the Steam market. In this case, when I was playing this earlier to test out the game, I was experiencing a metric boatload of Steam achievements that were all basically the same thing. You get this many kills, you get three achievements, you get four kills, you get, th you know, three more achievements. You destroy Pandora's box, you get the rest of the achievements. Like, I don't really know what was going on there, but it was, it was weird. I've never really seen that before in a game, even ones that were intentionally tongue-in-cheek. So this is a purchase that I would be wary of. There's not a lot to say about it now. I would keep an eye on it because it's a cheaper title. It might become good in the future after the developers have had some time to work on it, but as it stands right now, there's really not a lot to say about it. Like, it's a horde shooter that nine times out of ten that I've played it have very quickly overwhelmed my ability to shoot all these zombies, and I was not able to even get in within reach of the final boss, let alone with able to see it, fight it, and beat this current version of the game. So I'm going to give Idea Games the benefit of the doubt, but what I am going to say is I cannot recommend this title at this time because it's still a very raw work in progress and there really isn't a lot to do. If you're really good about hosing down the enemies like I've been so far when I was playing at first, then by all means you might get a lot of enjoyment out of this title and I've kind of 
enjoyed shooting the zombies to some extent, especially the sounds, because it sounds like my gun is shooting bongos as opposed to shooting bullets. So that's interesting all on its own. And there is a boss, like, they did bother to put a boss in, it's a- it's still a very raw boss. And I don't know that they're going- the developers are really, at this stage, going to be able to do something cool, like add in, like, an animation to, like, pick up the rock and fling it at people, so I don't know. So this is kind of a meh game, I don't recommend this at present. Check it out for yourselves if you're curious, the link is in the video description. And that'll be it for this one, I've been your host, Larry, this has been Drive-By Hero, toodles everybody, and have a good one.